friends welcome back to the session on listening barriers my name is sharmila bonerji and i am working as an assistant professor in communication skills at durga devi saraf institute of management studies what we are going to learn today is to know about what stops you from listening well in communication parlance we call them as listening barriers barriers or hurdles or obstacles which stop you from effective listening and obviously if as i had told you before if you don't listen effectively you cannot respond effectively so what are the different barriers in listening which stops you from listening in communication we have divided listening barriers as six prominent obstacles or hurdles these are if you can look into the slide number 1 psychological barrier environmental distractions emotional or personal barrier linguistic or semantic barriers socio cultural barriers and lastly physiological barriers now all these six barriers if you can understand one or the other point of time are troubling you and stopping you from listening effectively if you can realize maybe some of the barrier right now is working on you to listen to me effectively well let us look into each and every barrier in detail let us first look into the first barrier which is the most it's a barrier which affects you most of the time in a very negative way and it is very difficult to remove this barrier to help you to effect listen effectively this is the psychological barrier now what is a psychological barrier a psychological barrier is something which comprises your behavior it is with you sometimes since your birth the way you have grown up the way you have you know your values have been inbred inside you by your parents the culture which you belong to also puts lot of these psychological barriers inside you some of the examples as you can see in the slide close mindedness prejudice or envy ego involvement or egocentrism prejudgment the urge to debate or advise inability to pay attention if you can look into all these examples you will say that that every person will have something or the other thing as a psychological barrier inside him or her well my friends that's very true that's why i said this is the most difficult barrier to be removed from your mind if you have to listen effectively for example if you are prejudgmental so you think that you are the best in your field anyone who opens his or her mouth in front of you you will in the very beginning prejudge that person as a person who has less knowledge than you obviously your mind will not let you listen to this person effectively because you will judge him lower compared to you in his subject knowledge similarly the urge to debate or advise now if someone you will come across many people in your life the moment you start speaking to them they will immediately give a point contradictory to you and they will make sure maybe by the power of their loud voice they will try to subdue you in your communication well these all people are suffering from psychological barrier okay now we look into the next listening barrier called the environmental distractions as barrier and the environmental distraction as you can see first we have the physical distraction now for example you are into a very important meeting with your boss in his room and the secretary of the boss walks in now where the secretary is beautiful and she is dressed very nicely obviously your attention span at this very moment moves from your boss to the secretary now here this is known as physical distraction at this point you are right now not listening to your boss but your attention is towards the secretary and maybe at this time your boss has delivered some very important instruction which you need to carry out immediately after the meeting 
and you miss on to this instruction. Now this creates a listening barrier with your boss. Secondly, loud talking. So if your partner who's maybe sitting in the next workstation is talking loudly on telephone, that again stops you from listening effectively to maybe when you're talking to some client, important client on the telephone. Visual barriers. For example, if you're talking on phone and you're traveling or you're driving and a hoarding which is a very vibrant hoarding which is with a lot of colors, with a lot of, you know, maybe there is a celebrity star on the hoarding. Maybe temporarily you will look into the hoarding and maybe you miss some instruction which is being transferred through the telephone to you. Now these are very small examples of environmental distractions which actually takes you away from listening effectively. Let us now look at the other listening barrier, emotional or personal barrier. Now under emotional or personal barrier, as you can see, we have lot many, you know, different types like beliefs and attitude, sad memory, fear, anxiety, anger. Now all these feelings can be inside you and they can stop you from listening effectively. For example, if you're scared of a subject, now many of the students are scared of quantitative subjects. So the moment quantitative subjects like maths or finance comes in front of them, they are completely shut. They don't listen effectively because the fear of number actually overtakes their listening skills. Similarly, sad memory. Suppose if you have come to your class to attend this class and maybe some near and dear one of yours is not well, then obviously your mind is clouded with those thoughts and you don't listen effectively. Right? Next we get into the next barrier called the linguistic or the semantic barrier. Now this barrier has less to do with your emotions but more to do with your language, the way you speak. So it's speaker style of speaking and mannerism. Sometimes if your faculty or professor in the class is speak, speaking with a particular tone or he or she pronounces a particular word in a way which makes you laugh then obviously you will not be listening to her or him you would be obviously waiting when she is saying that word again so that I have I can have a great laugh on that but unfortunately you're missing the important instruction or knowledge he or she is delivering during that time difficult words and use of jargons Suppose if an IT professor uses jargons like HTTP or URL or HTML, for some of you it might become like what this person is speaking. If you knew that HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language or URL stands for Universal Resource Locator, it helps you to understand if abbreviations are used less and if the speaker is speaking in full using the full forms. So that sometimes also stops you from listening effectively. Lag time. Now what do you mean by lag time? Lag time is the time which a speaker takes between the addressal of the first word and the second. So if I say, hello, how are you? So you understand that the speaker is asking you, how am I? Or if I say, what is your name? So you understand that the speaker is asking you, what is your name? But Lag times comes as a barrier when I say, what is your name? So the lag time between what and is your name stops you from listening. Why? Because you think that what can be a scolding. What are you doing? But if it is what is your name, obviously there's nothing to fear. So the lag time sometimes creates a lot of, you know, thought inside your mind which stops you from listening that maybe the professor is trying to shout at you or scold you. So that is to do with lag time. Mispronounced words or words with double meaning. Now these are all different linguistic or semantic barrier pertaining to the language you're using. English is not the only language which can create listening barrier. For that matter, you're using any of the colloquial languages, even those languages have the same kind of listening barrier. Let us look into the next barrier, socio-cultural barrier. Now, this particular barrier very much resides in business organizations. For example, barrier which comes with different cultural background. In our country, we see that most of the time we are very culture biased. So if 
I have a junior who belongs to the same culture as I am. I am very good in very good relationship with that person. So whenever that person speaks, whether he's speaking wrong or right, I feel very comfortable with that person to talk to and I achieve the common frame of reference very quickly because I say he is from my cultural background. Personal space and public space. Now before I explain you this barrier, I need to first make you understand what is a personal space and what is a public space. So when a faculty is addressing her students or his students in the class, we say the distance between the listener and the speaker is like we are in public space because I am a public speaker. But what do you mean by then personal space? Personal space is something when you and your close friend are talking. So the distance between the sender and the receiver actually lessens. So your good friend or your close friend is in a very small distance with you when she is talking to you. Now what happens is when a person who is supposed to be in a public distance tries to intrude into your personal distance, obviously you become very conscious. And that conscious mind of yours stops you from listening effectively. Why? Because you think wrong about that person's intentions. So that is to do with personal space and public space. Next is sense of time. Now sense of time also induces a huge amount of listening barrier. For example, if your company is doing a business with an overseas company. Now we say that in our country, we really don't respect time. So if there is a meeting scheduled at a particular time and you don't make yourself available to your overseas client, they actually think that you don't respect time. And even after you reach, maybe delayed, whatever you speak to them, they have always, they have already been judgmental about you and they will not, maybe you will not get what you want from them as a positive response. They will not respect you because you have not respected time. And this sense of time has actually induced a barrier between you and your overseas client. Let us look into the next listening barrier, physiological barrier. Under physiological barrier, we have something which is to do with your physiology or your body. For example, hearing impairment, hunger, tiredness, pain. Now all this to do is to do with your physique. If you cannot physically hear, if obviously you are hungry when I am taking this session or you are in some kind of pain, physical pain, obviously these physical ailments stop you from listening effectively to me. To some extent all these barriers actually stop you from listening effectively and come into a common frame of reference. Thank you so much for being with us today.